So thank you everyone for being here. My name is Josulia Dercaya and I work as a researcher in Technalia Spain. Special thanks also for the organizers of this conference for being able to pull all this together, which must have been really challenging. And without further ado, I'm going to start sharing my screen and we'll head to the presentation. Okay, so today's presentation is called Analytical Preprocessing of Large Volumes of Sensor Data, which means how to leverage the computational power that nowadays its devices are bringing to the table. And we'll exemplify this with the use case of the CAF Group. This company has over a hundred years experience offering services in railway related markets. So I will introduce myself very briefly. I'm a software engineer and researcher, and over the last 10 years, I have experience working both in research and in industrial companies. So I've been lucky enough to see both worlds, and that has given me the opportunity to benefit from both. Currently, I'm working as a researcher for Technalia, and my focus is high-performance architectures and computation in the edge. And this is the album for today's presentation. So we'll start talking about this fairly recent concept, the Internet of Things. Uh, is it a revolution or a revolution? So we'll offer a bit of context, talking about the IoT, data intelligence, and massive IoT. Next, we'll provide some background and problems arising in the field. We'll head to the edge computing paradigm, elaborating on its benefits and deployment scenarios. And we'll follow the edge artificial intelligence concept including federated machine learning, real-time analytics, and pipeline orchestration. Finally, we'll showcase the CAF's use case, its current state, and future works. So re regarding the Internet of Things, is it an, a revolution or an evolution? So in the last 70 years, we have experienced two main revolutions that brought great progression. First, an industrial revolution in the 60s, where manufacturing adopted automation techniques to boost productivity. Second, the internet revolution in the 90s that provided the necessary technology for connecting the world together in a matter of seconds. Now we are on the edge of yet another revolution in which, in order to achieve further optimizations, we are leveraging data generated by things that traditionally were not connected to the internet. In fact, the estimation is that there are around 40 billion connected devices in the world. This is around five devices per person. In parallel, there is a push for using sensors in things that were traditionally hard to monitor. As with any other technology, there are associated risks with its use, such as privacy, cybersecurity. However, the opportunity generated by IoT far outweighs these risks, and there are many industries benefiting from it such as automotive with driverless cars and accident prevention, banking with data-driven insights, and manufacturing with predictive maintenance. In the new IoT landscape, we are going to introduce a few concepts, such as massive IoT and broadband IoT. According to Ericsson, the first refers to applications that are less latency sensitive and have relatively low throughput requirements, but require a huge volume of inexpensive, low energy consumption devices on a network with excellent coverage. On the other hand, broadband IoT requires higher throughput, lower latency and larger data volumes than massive IoT. In the bottom graph, it can be seen how these devices are expected to grow to 5 billion by 2025. There are new application fields coming from these technologies, like smart metering and asset management for massive IoT, drones and virtual and augmented reality for broadband IoT. There are also early pilots like critical IoT, which is used in industries where time-critical communications is a must, such as automotive and traffic safety and control. In this slide, we can see the IoT trending technologies. In today's talk, we'll focus on machine learning, artificial intelligence, and big data. Big data is a necessary enabler for processing and analyzing the huge amount of data 
being gathered by IoT devices. This processing is taking place in private and public clouds and organizations are very often choosing hybrid approach in which data and processing takes place on premises or in the cloud depending on the circumstances. Machine learning and artificial intelligence, on the other hand, are necessary for making sense of this data being generated and to be able to provide insights to businesses based on this data. A successful combination of these three is what brings value to companies. In particular, artificial intelligence is causing a sensation on the Internet of Things platforms. According to Garner, by 2022, more than 80% of business IoT projects will include an artificial intelligence component, compared to the 10% that is currently registered. So what is Massive IoT? The term was created by industry in reference to the connection of potentially tens of billions of devices and machines that will require further definition in the standards for LTE and later for 5G. For this reason, it is expected to be of great importance for the growth of telecommunications industry in the definition of the next generation products. Accordingly, it is expected to have a huge impact in very diverse sectors in the industry. We are already seeing a smart metering being used by utility companies, and there is a push for achieving this concept in smart cities, particularly for waste management, traffic monitoring, and parking. Home automation has already become a thing with a very broad offer, such as small thermostats, lights, and television, and the, light, and the list goes on and on having transports and logistics, agriculture, environment, industry, and end consumers benefiting from it. There are a few challenges though that this technology needs to overcome in order to become more widely adopted, starting with device cost. This is a key enabler for high volume mass market applications and will enable many of the use cases. Then battery life, many IoT devices will be battery powered and often the cost of replacing batteries in the field is just not viable. For coverage, deep indoor connectivity is a requirement for many applications in the utilities domain Furthermore, regional or even national or global coverage is a prerequisite for many use cases, especially within the transport domain. In terms of scalability, in order to enable a massive IoT market, networks need to scale efficiently. The initial investment required for supporting a limited number of devices must be manageable. On the other hand, the network capacity must be easy to scale to handle thousands or even millions of devices. And finally, diversity. Connectivity should be able to support diverse requirements from different use cases. The network must support everything from simple static sensors to tracking services and applications requiring higher throughput and lower latencies. In this slide, it can be seen the key technologies for massive IoT devices. And we're going to focus on machine intelligence, which is key to building IoT systems that can improve their own performance of a given task progressively as more data becomes available. In Massive IoT, which handles large volumes of data and millions of devices, machine intelligence is required to intelligently automate data transmission, routing, and data processing. A key point in distributed machine learning is being able to move this intelligence down to the edge devices which has a positive impact in latencies, enhances privacy, because very often data does not need to get out of the device in the first place and reduces bandwidth, hence reducing costs. In order for an organization to go down this path, it is essential that the IoT devices are able to perform low power computation close to where the data is generated and the actuation is needed. This requires specialized hardware and on the software side requires breaking down machine intelligence workflows into smaller pieces so they can be distributed more easily. So what are the problems that we can find while adopting IoT-based technologies in real case scenarios? So in 2019, Karner stated that the use of IoT devices and applications increased by 66% in the two previous years. However, 
87% of the users declared that the adoption of these solutions were not living up to the initial expectations. There are in fact a few problems associated with the processing of huge volumes of IoT data using artificial intelligence. Some of them are network congestion due to the high volume of traffic, less fault tolerant solutions due to the centralization of processing and storage, and high delays and latencies when data needs to be transmitted to a central node. And the solution may lay in edge computing. So there are three main computing paradigms that companies are leveraging. These, these are cloud, fog, and edge computing. Firstly, cloud computing offers a centralized repository of data, always available and very scalable. It is often seen as, as a service when using public cloud providers. On the other hand, edge computing offers very low latencies by leveraging node resources. It is about moving computing down to where the data is generated. And finally, for computing is a mid approach between both. It reduces latencies in comparison to the cloud computing, and it may offer better performance than edge computing. All of them have their benefits and disadvantages, and the goal is being able to benefit from the advantages while mitigating the downsides of each of them. So focusing on edge computing, this paradigm focuses on executing the computation right where data gets generated. For instance, performing data processing in the factory itself. This way, latencies are minimized, processes taking place in the cloud may be alleviated, and network traffic is reduced. In addition, it is key for the optimization of the available resources of the infrastructure. This approach is ideal for critical systems when the time response is a stringent requirement. Edge computing complements cloud computing to become a more distributed architecture. Data processing at the edge reduces latency and keeps data relevant. And businesses that have adopted cloud computing can benefit from edge nodes, increasing this way redundancy and availability. In this slide, we are going to wade a bit further into the deployment possibilities and will introduce multi-access edge computing. This is a technology in which computing resources are installed close to the end mobile users of the network, avoiding continuous access to resources and latency and the need for centralized computing. And even though edge computing is not that recent, it is a cornerstone for accommodating future services and 5G applications. And the way in which edge computing platforms are available will have a significant impact on them. The management and the access to these edge resources are still under extensive study. This is why there are so many deployment variants in which we can find for multi-access edge computing, MEC, and cloud edge. In for computing, some of the data being generated by the different devices are stored on the devices themselves, instead of just having to send them to the cloud. MEC is a fairly recent term and tries to offer application developers and content provider cloud computing-like capabilities at the edge of the network. Its purpose is providing ultra-low latency and high bandwidth. Some of the early implementation of MEC are based on the concept of cloudlets, which are virtualized resources for computation and storage at the edge of the infrastructure. In this context, and considering many of the 5G applications will require the use of these computation resources, it is worth considering the definition of deployment strategies based on microservices in the form of virtual networks. And from the concept of edge computing, we'll head to the concept of executing artificial intelligence workloads in the edge. In edge artificial intelligence, edge AI, algorithms are processed locally on a hardware device. They use data coming from sensors or signals. One of the key benefits is that it does not need to be connected to perform properly. Instead, it can take decisions based on the data independently. It allows real-time operations, including data creation, decision, decision making and action in a matter of milliseconds. This fast reaction time is crucial in areas like self-driving cars and robotics. 
In addition, it reduces costs for data communication, which leads to less power consumption. This is particularly important in the wearable services domain. HAI offers some benefits. It performs faster than other centralized IoT-based deployments. Since that data gets analyzed and feedback is sent in the device itself, it raises safety and security since data does not need to be transmitted to other devices, hence making it less vulnerable to cyber attacks. The burden on the network is alleviated since less data needs to be transmitted to the cloud, hence reducing network requirements and associated power consumption. All these present some challenges and we are going to deep dive into the use of HAI technologies for federated machine learning solutions, how to leverage these HAI devices to be used in the orchestration of analytical pipelines and the use in real-time stream analytics. So federated learning was first proposed by Google and the main idea was to build machine learning models based on data sets that are distributed across multiple devices. It is about training a centralized model on the centralized data. In federated learning, the data never leaves the device. Instead, the device receives a model which gets trained and the result of this training, not the data itself, is sent back to the server. There is no way to reconstruct the original data from the results that are sent over the network. Hence, one of the key benefits is that it promotes privacy. This is indeed one of the main reasons it is gaining traction lately as a result of the desire by customers and governments for enhanced privacy. Summarizing, federated learning is beneficial in domains where privacy is a must due to less data gets transferred over the network. It is useful in those domains in which transferring large amounts of data is expensive or unreliable, or when power consumption must be limited. Federated machine learning is able to utilize edge devices by leveraging distributed machine learning algorithms and promoting at the same time security. Another field which is gaining traction over the last few years is how to decompose analytical pipelines into smaller chunks so we can manage to execute each of them where they can make the most impact. For instance, in this slide, ideally we could execute the first three stages, which are data acquisition, data extraction and cleaning, and data aggregation in edge devices, and data analysis, modeling and interpretation in the cloud. This way, we could optimize resources while minimize, minimizing costs. There are a few technologies that can assist in the conceptualization of such, such solutions. In general, continuization is very useful and it enables the possibility of packaging whole pipeline stages to be delivered to its devices alongside its dependencies. In this process, projects as Docker for the continuization and Docker Swarm and Kubernetes for advanced pipeline orchestration may be useful. However, these technologies are not inherent to the machine learning and artificial intelligence domain. In this sense, PFA and PMML are domain-specific languages for the definition of machine learning models that can assist in the process of executing these models in the edge. Finally, projects like MLflow try to cover a wider range of the machine learning lifecycle, from training and packaging to delivering and monitoring. In, the, in addition to collection and transmitting data to the cloud, edge computing can perform analysis and necessary actions on the collected data directly in the nodes. Transferring large amounts of data over the internet in real time can be a challenge, particularly because very often unreliable internet connections are used. In order to solve this, adding intelligence to the edge nodes brings the possibility of performing some of these analytic capabilities closer to where data is generated. This provides a less expensive setup for the optimization of the asset performance. One of the main techniques for real-time analytics is through streaming, which consists in processing and analyzing data without storage. The benefit here is higher velocity of the processing that can be achieved due to the lack of reading and writing the derived latencies. And there is an increasing set of hardware and software solutions that promote the, the use of HAI within organizations. 
An example is Coral AI, which is a board that aspires to be flexible enough to be used in prototyping and production environments. It is regarded to be efficient, fast, private, again, because it gives the possibility of what data needs to be stored or transferred and does not need internet connection to be effective. A few more software solutions can be found, such as Minify, which is a stripped down version of NiFi that lets us get out to the very edge and it focuses on the collection of data at the source of its creation. Similarly, TensorFlow Lite is a lightweight version of TensorFlow for mobile and embedded solutions, which provides low latency inference of machine learning models taking place in the edge devices. It provides fast performance as well as small binaries that can fit on the devices. Apache Agent, on the other hand, is a programming model to be used in embedded devices, providing real-time analytics on continuous data streams. Finally, cloud providers like Azure, AWS, and Google offer their own solutions for edge computing and IoT. So what does edge computing bring to the table in the industry 4.0 domain? So first, a large number of machines and nodes can be monitored in real time. This is only possible due to the characteristics of the network, like 5G. Second, it is possible to send and receive alerts in real time with maximum reliability and very low latencies. Third, edge resources are becoming more powerful and the advances in the deployment and orchestration of analytical processes facilitate harnessing these possibilities. Fourth, the use of virtual and augmented reality to train and assist users is becoming a reality. Finally, federated machine learning optimizes the use of edge devices while maintaining privacy as the main concern. Over the last few years, we keep hearing the term industry 4.0 or the so-called fourth industrial revolution. Technologically, some of the enablers are Internet of Things, artificial intelligence and IT amongst others. Big data was first conceptualized to address the challenges presented by high volume, high velocity and high variety data being generated by the devices. Hence, new technologies were necessary to tackle these challenges. One of them being DevOps, which is an attempt to bring together the development and operation teams in order to increase the success rate of the projects being operationalized in production environments. And its successor, MLOps, which tries to apply the same principles once used for software to the machine learning and artificial intelligence projects. Lastly, cloud providers are offering software as a service solutions to help organizations in their digitization, but at the risk of vendor locking, which can be mitigated by with infrastructure as code techniques. And this brings us to the CAV use case. Digital transformation has been an ongoing pursuit of this company. One of these efforts is the Leadmine project, in which CAV combines Internet of Things, more data being gathered in trains, big data, to be able to store, transform, and visualize this data, artificial intelligence, to be able to extract insights from the data via machine learning techniques and cybersecurity technologies to maintain the highest standards of privacy and security. This way, they offer a new generation of connected trains that makes them more competitive in the railway industry. This is how CAF introduced these new digital products in the LeadMine project, a new generation of sensorized trains with real-time transmissions during operation thanks to mobile technologies. This huge amount of data is managed by hybrid infrastructure with part of the processes taking place on premises and part in the cloud. A team of machine learning and artificial intelligence experts are able to generate knowledge out of the raw data. And this knowledge is visualized leveraging tools of the big data ecosystem. So why do organizations need support throughout this process? Because it's complicated. It's a new paradigm for companies in the industrial domain that are trying to embrace this digital transformation. In addition, as it can be seen in the middle image, the combination of technologies that coexist in the big data and artificial intelligence ecosystem is daunting. And on top of that, they are continuously evolving. Regarding the infrastructure, there is no clear answer yet to where to keep your processes. Having everything on premises, 
everything on the cloud, which means also the need for selecting a cloud provider or opting for a hybrid, hybrid approach. So you can see how CAF had to travel this path of embracing all these technologies and processes in order to make the project a success. First, having to deal with cybersecurity, which is sending secure information over the network, both with mobile technologies and traditional broadband. In addition, having to integrate with the company's already existing user management systems, opting for a hybrid infrastructure in which some of the processes are executed in the cloud, some on premises, but also trying to avoid vendor locking with the use of infrastructure as code technologies. Having to integrate distributed teams with different goals using DevOps techniques, and finally, having to monitor the distributed and heterogeneous infrastructure. So what lies ahead of us in this project is precisely being able to utilize edge devices to their full potential. This will line in lighten the processing load of the cloud. It will improve the processing times, lower the costs due to the less storage and processing taking place in the cloud, and it will also lead to simpler software processes with less points of failure. So, so that is, thanks everyone for watching. So it's been a real pleasure being here today and I hope the presentation has been of great interest to you all and feel free to ask any questions you may have. Thank you.